So here we go, man. This is it. <laughs> NBA Finals. Lakers versus Heat. Um, one team we were really expecting to be there. And one team we weren't really expecting to be there. And that's the Miami Heat. So let's get to it. So first things first, I'll start off by saying this. This is a great, great matchup for both teams. I think um, Bam and AD, that's going to be an amazing matchup. Jimmy and Braun, amazing matchup. Both two great defenses. Let's just start off with Bam versus AD because I think that's going to be obviously the marquee matchup. I think um, not Jimmy and Braun, but I think it'll be Bam and AD as the marquee matchup. Uh, can Bam be that guy for AD? Can he be the quote-unquote AD stopper? Even though I don't think anyone's stopping AD at this point in his career. He's athletic enough. He's strong enough. And, you know, the height is, is perfectly fine. He's 6'10 as well. So, And most importantly, he has the smarts to guard Anthony Davis. First question I always ask in every series with the Lakers. Do they go big or do they go small? In this series... I think the Lakers should and will go small and stay small throughout. Throw Marcus Morris in there. Get some more switchability when it comes to handoffs for the Heat. Get some more three-point shooting and things like that. As we know, Bam isn't really a low post like threat. Um, he can score in a low post, but he's not like Joel Embiid or Nikola Jokic or anyone like that. So I don't think the Lakers have too much to worry about there. So they, they got to go small with Morris. I'll just say this, man. Bam out of bio will give AD some fits. I think Bam's going to do a good job of like kind of bodying up AD, you know, but I said that Bam's also a really, really smart defender as well. So he can body up and be physical with AD without really fouling him as much. And no, I'm not saying AD is just going to completely struggle and Bam's going to shut him down, but there's going to be points in this series where Bam is going to have his way against AD, maybe for a whole game or two. And AD is going to have to find a way to adjust. It's going to be two great players going at it. Great offensive player in AD, great defensive player and bam the unstoppable force meets the immovable object who will come out on top but another big factor that plays into that matchup is how does miami guard ad as a whole as we've seen throughout the playoffs miami has elected to go to a zone defense and for the most part it's been pretty successful for them uh in the celtic series it was successful in the beginning and then the celtics kind of figured it out and you know celtics play better against the zone than anyone else did but I think the Heat will go back to the zone again in this series and that's going to be real interesting because I don't really know if any team has played a zone against LeBron before, um, but I'll get into that in a second. The Heat might have to change up their zone just a little bit, especially when AD's posting up guys. So let's say he's having his way against Bam or Olenek guarding him or Jay Crowder's guarding him and you know AD's just scoring on damn near every play do the heat go to like a zone that the rockets kind of did where that was kind of successful where they had the guy playing them straight up but they brought over a double team from the baseline or they would bring the second guy over slowly but surely and then they would just leave the opposite corner wide open the opposite shooter in the opposite corner wide open uh for a shot and just kind of condense the court a little bit i mean okay so the rockets kind of were successful at that as they didn't let AD beat him too much when it came when it came to post ups, um, but the problem was the Lakers guys hit shots. Alex Caruso hit shots. As we know, Rajon Rondo hit shots. Marcus Morris couldn't miss in that series. Uh, KCP and Danny Green were good in that series as well. So it's gonna come down to those guys hitting shots. And, and if those Lakers role players are hitting shots, I mean, it's impossible to beat the Lakers, honestly. But like I said earlier, it's going to be real, real tough to play a zone against LeBron. He's going to absolutely destroy it. Um, and the way to destroy zones, obviously passing. What is LeBron's greatest skill set? Passing um, and IQ. So LeBron will find a way to exploit that. I think the Lakers are going to resort to a lot of Braun and AD pick and rolls more than normal. But the problem there is Bam's guarding AD and if Bam gets switched on to Braun, I mean, I'm not terrified if i'm the miami heat i think i'm pretty sure bam can stay in front of braun but bam but braun might be a little bit too strong braun's gonna get his regardless i'm not worried about him at all the only question i have about lebron is 
being passive in fourth quarters and having to and taking his foot off the gas you know when the Lakers go up big the Lakers team as a whole when they go up big they just kind of coast along coast along coast along and then they allow the opposing team to come back with turnovers and a whole bunch of just ill-advised shots and stuff like that and the Lakers cannot afford to fall asleep man whenever they're up because I mean Miami Heat or one of the most resilient teams in the league they capitalize more than anyone in the league off of your mistakes the Miami Heat do that the best and Le LeBron and the Lakers have to know that who gets the Braun assignment that's gonna be pretty interesting I'd say Jake Crowder will be the guy on uh, Braun majority of the time but you know as the games go on as the series goes on I think we'll see more and more Jimmy Butler uh, I'll get to Jimmy Butler in a second offensively but I don't expect him to see I don't expect to see him on LeBron too much in this series uh, I expect a lot of Andre Iguodala. He's going to be playing a lot of minutes. And Bam, like I said, will be, guard be guarding uh, Braun at times, especially when AD's out of the game. And we're going to see if they're going to try to build a wall around Braun as well. But, I mean, Braun still can beat you either way. So, um, the big problem is Braun. Uh, AD's going to do his thing, but he's not going to dominate Bam. That's for sure. And I expect the Lakers role players to keep going as well. Rondo, Green, KCP, Kuzma. These guys have been pretty good uh, ever since the Rockets series. And I just think they found a groove. They found a rhythm offensively when they come into the game. So I think that's going to help them a lot in this series as well. And I got to talk about Rajon Rondo for the Lakers offensively. He's going to be a big key for them. And Rondo's just presence, his IQ, his ball movement, his knack for setting up teammates. It's just so, so valuable in the playoffs, man getting easy looks for your guys that's so valuable in the playoffs especially for this lakers team that tends to struggle offensively you know rajon rondo is a guy that can take pressure off of braun and ad and give those guys easy looks as well so he makes everything a lot easier for the lakers and it's playoff rondo man Honestly, along with LeBron AD pick and rolls, I expect LeBron to try to pick out a defender he wants to go at all the time, whether it's Drogic, whether it's Hero, whether it's uh, Kendrick Nunn when he comes in, whether it's uh, Duncan Robinson, if I didn't mention him already. Like, I think LeBron's going to try to attack one of those four guys I just mentioned uh, at nauseum at times, uh, especially when the Lakers go into scoring droughts. Let's see if the Lakers can exploit the perimeter defense of the Miami Heat. Now, speaking of Miami Heat, on the flip side, can the Miami Heat score enough with these guys? We, we know the Heat are going to bring the defense. We know the Heat are going to be disciplined. We know they're going to fight to the end. But it's going to come down to them scoring uh, as much as possible, scoring with efficiency and consistency. Like I've said before in previous series, this is going to be a Jimmy Butler series where he has to take over. If the Heat are going to win the finals, Jimmy Butler must take over over um when i say take over i mean 25 plus points per game versus the pacers he averaged 20 versus the bucks he went up to 23 and then versus the celtics he went back down to 19 so that's definitely not going to cut it against braun and ad jimmy butler has to be that one constant guy that scores 25 plus i know he likes to get his teammates going i know he likes to get his shots within the flow of the offense um but Miami's going to go on scoring droughts and they are going to need Jimmy Butler to just get get the ball, get everyone else out of the way and to just go get a bucket. Will Bam be able to score on AD? Uh, he's going to struggle against AD as well. This will be a struggle fest between Bam and AD and you know I just think AD is going to come out on top because he's just more talented uh, offensively and defensively but Bam, he's going to struggle on AD. He's a guy that likes to get a lot of his points off of pick and rolls, lobs, and, you know, off of fake handoff plays. You know, the Heat like to do those handoff plays a lot. And Bam's gotten better at hitting those 12-foot shots, those 12, 15-foot mid-range shots, which I love to see. But, I mean, AD is not a typical big man where they're just going to drop, where he's just going to drop back and let you shoot those all day long. AD's going to be right there up on you. And if Bam's struggling, that means the Miami Heat's offense is struggling i'm not just saying bam's gonna struggle scoring the ball he might struggle passing the ball too anthony davis is gonna be right there with the ball pressure hands up maybe bam is not, not as good of a passer in this series as he normally is because of 80s ball pressure because of 80s length and athleticism and we know a lot of the heat's offense runs through bam will Drogic, hero and robinson give the miami heat a consistent 
maybe 13 to 18 points from these guys. Damn, I don't know how much he's going to average in this series, but can Drajic, Kiro, or Robinson, can one of those guys be consistent, you know? It feels like it's one of those guys each game, but I feel like in this series, they're going to need a definite third guy, and if I had to pick, I'll just go with Goran Drajic. He has the ability to, you know? Tyler Hero is a rookie. He's going to make mistakes. He's going to take ill-advised shots with his irrational confidence. As we know, it's great, but at times it can lead him to some bad shots. And Duncan Robinson, when he's limited, he's limited. He can only shoot a three ball. He can do it at a high clip, a very high clip. But other than that, if the Lakers can lock him down, I'm pretty sure they'll have KCP on him. So maybe Robinson's minutes will fluctuate throughout the series. Goran Dragic, I think, will need to be that guy. I'm pretty sure he'll have like Danny Green on him or something. That's going to be a real good matchup. Can Dragic give you a consistent probably 17 to 20 points, 22 points? Um, I think he can. I think he can. But will he? I honestly think he will. Um, and if Dragic were to get hot, the question is, will the Lakers start to like trap him in any way, shape or form? Uh, I know Guan Dragic's not Jamal Murray. Guan Dragic is definitely not James Harden. Uh, but that's the capability of getting hot. And will the Lakers double team him or trap him or try, just try to get the ball out of his hands if he gets going? I don't really think so. Maybe we'll see it here and there. But the biggest thing for Miami, they cannot turn the ball over. When they turn the ball over, Lakers will get easy transition points. The Lakers are pretty much saved by easy transition buckets. The Lakers offense at times seems to get a little weird and bogged down, even with LeBron and AD out there. The offense gets pretty bad sometimes, okay? Getting these easy transition points, transition layups, transition dunks, transition threes, KCP, Danny Green, Kuzma, these guys all excel for some reason. They, they excel way more when they're shooting transition threes than a regular set shot three. And we saw that against Houston. Houston turned the ball over a ton and failed to get back in transition. The Lakers absolutely destroyed Houston uh, when it came to transition. That was the difference in the series. Miami has to get good quality looks every single time. Even when they're not turning the ball over, you still got to get a good shot up because the Lakers are still going to run if you just take a bad shot or even if you make a shot, you still have to get back. You saw it against Denver. Jamal Murray made a three. Jamal Murray or Jeremy Grant hit a three and then the Lakers came right back down three four seconds later They hit a three of their own and it's like, okay, what the hell, you know, you got to get back against these guys That's the biggest thing for Miami and Miami's three-point shooting has took a dip uh, over, over the past couple games It did go back up, but in that series they're trending down where they shot 44% in game one 33% game two 27% in games three and four 19% in game five, so can Jay Crowder, Duncan Robinson, Tyler Hero hit threes consistently for the Heat? They're going to have to. They're just going to have to. Uh, even Iguodala, they'll leave him wide open. And he's like I said, Iguodala's going to be playing a lot of minutes. He has to be able to hit that three ball when he's in the game. Or Miami's offense is just going to be compromised. More, more compromised than it already can be at times. And with that being said, I think we'll see more Butler pick and rolls with Bam. Uh, maybe even Drogic and Bam pick and rolls. I think we'll see more pick and rolls from the Miami Heat. And maybe less handoffs if the shot's not really falling for them. But I really want to see Jimmy Butler take over this series. And maybe when Kuzma's in the game, you attack him. You just got to find easy looks if you're Miami. Because offense will be hard to come by, I think, for Miami. Both teams have great defenses. And both teams tend to really, really struggle offensively. So I think this series is going to come down to who gets easier looks uh, and better looks offensively. Uh, and I'll, I'll lean towards the Lakers on that one. Because LeBron is completely unstoppable still at this point. Year 17, 35 years old. LeBron is still going to get his. AD, I think, will still get his, even though he will struggle against Bam at times. Bam will really struggle against AD, I believe. And Jimmy Butler is going to have to average 25+. Plus. And to be honest with you, I just don't see it. The Lakers have good defenders. LeBron will be on Jimmy Butler in crunch time. Best believe that. Uh, who's going to be on him for the most part? Maybe Danny Green or Morris. And The, the, the Lakers just don't have a guy to really pick at uh, defensively. Maybe Kuzma. But other than that, Lakers are solid, solid defensive team. And with that being said, I will go at the Lakers to win the NBA Finals in six games. And this is the third straight series. Throughout the whole playoffs, I've picked the Lakers to win each series in six. 
Um, they've won each series in five, so maybe I'm wrong again, but I'm going to be a boneheaded guy and go with the Lakers in six once again.